What's up everybody? Happy Saturday afternoon. The sun is out. The weather looks lovely actually. Might go for a walk later. But today we're recording Mist. That's right. We're going back to the Granddaddy 3D immersive puzzle game that started the genre. Hashtag don't at me if that's incorrect. I'm not 100% sure if that's true. Mist came out when I was like six years old or thereabouts and... Yeah, 1993. So I was seven years old when Mist came out. I did own a copy of it on my Apple, um, but being seven years old, I basically got stuck on the first puzzle and well, I didn't know what I could tell you. I'm not going to do randomized. I am going to do classic, but has 30 years of puzzle game evolution left this game in the dust or does it still hold up as a puzzle game we're going to find out into the fissure the book would not be destroyed as i had planned it continued falling into that starry expanse of which i had only a fleeting glimpse i've tried to speculate where it might have landed but i must admit that such conjecture is futile still the questions about whose hands might one day hold my miss book unsettling to me. I know my apprehensions might never be allayed, and so I close, realizing that perhaps the ending has not yet been written. Mm-hmm. Okay, W to move forward. What do we have? Okay, a loading screen. So this is... So this has been re-rendered into full 3D now. It's a little bit choppy on the... It looks a little bit choppy on the, on the rotation, actually, to me. So let's just quickly... Well, do you know what? I'll fiddle with the settings uh, just very quickly. I'll be back in a second. And we're back. So... Couldn't perfectly smooth it out super nicely, but we'll go... Uh, we'll just go with it. Press the escape button on your keyboard to open the menu. Yes, we know that control already. We have a lever here that does nothing. Okay. I'm interested to see what's in the what's in the bunker here. Right, so that just opens and closes the door. That's fine. I do remember the pool. Wow, this is a Here we go. Settings for the dimensional imager, topographical extrusion, extrusion test. Basically, we've got 40, 47, and 67. What is this? Oh. Forty, forty-seven, and sixty-seven. Oh, water turbulent pool is sixty-seven. So you turn that on, and there we go, it gives you water turbulent pool. So let's turn on a uh, marker switch diagram, 47. Okay, and topographical extrusion test on number 40. And what does this give us? Th 
That indeed does look like a topographical extrusion, doesn't it? Okay, come back to that room later. So we've got a path there, we've got a path up to here. Right, another switch. Does anything? Nope. There's a ship which clearly needs raising from the ocean. Another switch. What is this? Okay, pass on that one. What is this doing? So that's numbers up to 23. So that's a time. Yeah, okay, so that's a time. And then we've just got four digits which go from zero to nine. Oh, so that must be year. So it's month, day, 31st of Jan. But presumably if you move that to... Yeah, okay. Month, day, year, time. Fine. That presumably just closes the door. Oh! Okay, we have stars above us. Feels like the game audio might be really loud, so let me just knock it down a few decibels there. We have an old-timey style rocket ship. A ladder. Okay, no, no power, no power. I mean, the, the comparison is obvious, right? But yeah, very much reminiscent of... I mean, I suppose the most recent game I've played, which this is reminiscent of, is The Room. But in honesty, this kind of... it, it This does feel weirdly nostalgic, right? I mean, like, as I said, I, I did own a copy of this game when I was, like, seven years old when it first came out. I mean, maybe I wasn't seven. Maybe the game was already old by the time I got it. Maybe I was, like, eight, nine, ten, something like that. Like, but... It's, it is sort of unlocking some memories for me. It's a goose. An eye. And we've got a model of the ship that's in the harbour. Perhaps. Use spacebar to take a picture. You can access your photos through the menu. Well, that's handy. Great, great, great. Cool. So we don't need to break out the mirror board straight away for this. What was that?
Oops. Okay. No. What? Who are you? Okay. Bring me a red page. Okay. Cirrus, as in the star. I'm assuming that name is not coincidental. Okay. Are we starting again? No, that's it. Okay, so red page needed for him. Okay. <laughs> right. Right, okay, this just is open and close, I guess, for that. Okay, this brings us to what appears to be an elevator. Okay, the button appears to not do much there. Oh, but we do have a blue page. So, what do we think of the uh, the CG models versus the FMVs? Do we want to switch it up for FMVs? We could. Maybe for maybe for the next session, we will go uh, FMVs rather than. Okay. Yep, there's a button. Oh. We have a whole button pad full of buttons. Okay, very unclear what is required there. Oh, this door is closed. Ah, maybe we need to hit that open and that will open that up. So that thing on top of the mountain spins round as we spin the dial on the top there. Okay. So let's check out this path. We have a small outbuilding here. Which actually goes quite far underground, apparently.
And once again, we have got questions. Aha! Power to ship generator switches. Hang on, trying to get the... Right, okay, so that increments us up by different amounts. So, the power is the left-hand one, and your... And how much is going to the ship is the right-hand one. Okay, we're we trying to get these into the correct order, is it? Oh no. Oh it's not it's not going at all now. Why is that? What did I break? Do I need to do I need to reset something? Oh man. Okay, so I have a feeling that this is a question of getting those buttons done in the correct order. How do I even reset that puzzle though? That button, that switch there. Maybe, maybe not. So, genuinely, it's only... Well, it's letting me push the buttons, but it's not its not winding up the power to the ship at all. Okay, did something happen on the ship itself? Which I can have a look at. Nope. Let's try. No. Wow. This is an old school puzzle game indeed. Okay, let's uh, let's check out the next uh, the next buildings. So we have something here which lets us select particular times, and then you press a button once you have it, pointing to the correct time. So that's pretty reasonable. Look out for things which look like times, I suppose. We have a combination lock, which will be a three-digit code from somewhere. slightly unclear what that's doing except making a hissing sound. Okay, we can't get round this tree, but there is a tree 
coming straight up from a big hole in the ground. And it's, again, it's somewhat unclear what the importance of that is. And that might be the whole island at, as it stands at the moment. So what have we got here? Anchor. It's not a tick, it's only got six. Okay, we've got a snake and an eye. Bird. A cross. A leaf. And an arrow. Okay. I tell you what, this game does not hold your hand, does it? Because that is it. So we found a lot of locks. We have not really found any keys. Not really found any keys. I mean, what happens if you are uh, just selecting a different number? Right, okay, it, it actually does nothing. So... So the dimensional imager takes two-digit numbers. If there is anything else to see in there, that that would be possible just about to, um, to brute force. I wonder though, what is the relevance of these switches that are around the place? Let's, let's go and set this up on, on that switch. Because we started with the water, I don't think the water's of relevance, right? If we move, let's move this to 47 and take a closer look at those switches. I do not see anything special about what that is doing. Wow. Tell you what, puzzle games in the 90s were hard. Like, people must have been way smarter in the past. Like, I am... I might be stuck. I might be stuck already. I'm literally, I'm getting flashbacks to eight-year-old me not being able to answer any of the puzzles. What happens, okay, what happens if you go and put today's date in? Right, so the date today, March... 18th. Yeah, we'll just we'll just go go for it. No, this is just this is just a planetarium, right? Okay. So what's the
Wow, doesn't move doesn't move that far in an hour, mate. Don't get it. Like, I don't see any kind of constellations that it looks like we're supposed to be pointing towards. So, okay, we'll have a think about that. Oh, that is then a different colour when you do that. So why is that a different colour, huh? So clearly, clearly we need to get power to it. How do I get power to it? It's got to be the generator, right? Which is down here. This has kind of got, there's a little square next to three and eight, and it was eight that... But again, yeah. Just not really sure how to reset the generators because this dial I've broken it. How do I reset them? I mean, like, would it be a problem if I turn everything on and we'll just kind of go from there? Like, can't, can't hurt me to have it all on, right? So if I now press, if I now pull this lever... Nope, nothing's going to happen there. This is still hissing. 
This is a picture of the tree, right? Okay, not hissing anymore. We've got some stuff to read. Okay, excellent. I just thought to myself, the library only had two books. Cool, okay. Emmett was the first to live on the rocks. He named them the rocks because that is what they were, a group of sharp rocks clustered together in the middle of the large sea. This is where Emmett lived. He enjoyed his life. Emmett would occasionally swim to nearby rocks as it was never too far of a distance. One day, another person appeared on the rocks for no apparent reason to Emmett. Emmett named this new person Branch. Emmett and Branch quickly became friends, swimming and hunting for fish together often. Emmett showed Branch the simple cave in which he lived, the in which he lived on the largest rock. Soon, Branch discovered a place where he decided to live also on the same large rock. The sun always shone brightly in their road, in their world, and the water was dazzlingly clear allowing them to see almost to the deep ocean floor which surrounded them. Though the sun always shone... Oh man, there is a lot of... There's a lot of writing here. My phone keeps going off. Hey everyone, that design feel from the future here, and that's why, you know, when people ask me, hey, how come you only stream like once a week, but you do record a lot of games, and that is essentially because sometimes, you know, life needs you to pay it attention at very short notice. So, sorry I didn't do very much of an outro in that last video. I'm actually recording this just as I'm about to record part two, in fact. So, stick around. I'm really enjoying this game. I'm like properly thoroughly stuck. Now that we've got to the library and we've got some books to read though, that's certainly going to be the first part of next chapter. Probably means you can skip the first 15 minutes of it. We'll see. See you next time. Bye bye.